In this grasshopper tutorial, we want to make a kinetic clock model, a kinetic clock, which is basically a solstice uh, clock. You can search it in the web. And I'm going to show you how you can fabricate this with the sections. So if I just increase that, you can see it's going to open again. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, model these sections, which will sit on together and produce the clock as you can see this is the real solstice clock and it's opening uh, first i'm going to show you a video about uh, the designer uh, how it's made and those things and then we'll start the tutorial Okay, before we start the tutorial, if you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. Uh, we have weekly tutorials about Grasshopper, and you can also watch this video up here, which is related to the Grasshopper for Beginners. And we also have a course, so you can watch our course lessons up here. I will put the playlist in the card section. Okay, so let's get started from scratch. The most important thing about this as you watched it in the video, is that this is the base model. So we have to make this one, this part. And you can see that if we mirror this uh, for this plane, we will have this section. And that will make the whole clock happen. So if you watch this, you can see it's 12 models around a circle, so it's a, a polar array. I'm going to focus on this part, which is this section and this one, because it goes behind that. And then we can make the polar array. Uh, I'm going to go to the, let's just put the bifocus plug in so you can see that. On the curve section, I'm going to go to the line SDL. And for the start, I'm going to extract that and set this on the center. Uh, just because we want to have the image so we can model that correctly. Then we have the direction. It's in the X direction. So I'm going to give a unit X and the length is maybe 500. These are just baselines for the designing. So you can just add a big number so you can always intersect them later. Uh, the next line I have to make is this one and the mid center. Uh, if we have 12 model of these sections, the module uh, will have a degree of 360 degrees divided by 12, right? And then you can also uh, find this degree, which is 360 degrees divided by 24. So you can make that happen. Let's just rotate this line. I'm going to use the rotate 3D, rotate this line uh, around the center. So I'm going to give that point to the center. Uh, right click put it on degrees and I'm going to say 360 degrees in the math section divided by 12 so let's just put this forward and here we go and then we have to also make that line by dividing this degree to x divided by 2 and we will have these three baselines which are important for us and now we have to make this model uh, basically this is the base module which you can model it and then produce the clock so for the kinetic clock what we want to do is to make a point which moves on this line we can simply move this point the center point in the x direction this is the first uh, parameter we have so I'm going to give this an X and a number slider which we move that point on the X direction uh, the next thing we have to do is to uh, make this line on here and go to the second line okay so this point is also uh, the second parameter because we can change it the location so let's just do that uh, we can move that point the direction is this direction. I'm going to go to this line. Params menu, connect a vector. And multiply that in the math section. We 
with another number. So these are the two important parts uh, we have to model. The most important thing is that when you connect the line to the vector, it's going to assume that this is uh, the vector, so it's going to uh, make that line big. What we want to do is to uh, find the unit vector, right? The unit vector is the a vector which is length, the length is 1, but it's the same direction of the base vector. So we're going to, we're going to type unit, unit vector, and connect it to the base vector. So we make that a unit, and now we can also move that forward. Okay, uh, that's the second parameter we need, and now we can make the line. The rest is not really complicated. We want to put that curve on this and make that line. The most important thing is how can we make the second line when, uh, because this is really important, this is basically the complete module, right? So what we want to do is that when we move that uh, a little bit forward, right, uh, the second part is that if we move that like this, just drawing this, uh, what we want to do is that put that point on back onto that track, right? Because we want to make it a polar array, so we have to be sure we have that. Uh, the most important thing is really simple. We have to make another line exactly the same size of this onto uh, with a radius. Basically, if this is A, we can make a circle with a radius A and find the intersection. So I'm going to go to the curve, circle, put that circle on that point, and the radius is basically the same as the line. Now what we have to do is to find the intersection between this circle and this line. Intersection, uh, curve, curve, and let's just find this. And now we can also produce that second line. So let's just go and connect this point to the connection to the intersection we have to pick that up from list item because you will have two intersection points the first one is here and the second one is here so let's just do that get that to this spot so that's it I'm going to turn everything off and turn on those lines we have these two lines which you can see here let's join them so I'm going to go to the curve and use the join curve to join this line with the shift key. Use the shift key to add this up. Check this out. You have to have them all in one group, so we have to flatten this. Again, if you don't know about flatten, I'm going to put up the tutorial about flatten graph and groups. So remember, you have to join those two lines. They don't have to be in two separate groups. And then we will have, you can see if I don't flatten this, we will have two lines and they don't join because the groups are two separate, so when we flatten, you can see that they are in one group and they join together. Okay, so the most important thing is that we want to make the mechanism. So I'm going to move this and make the kinetic clock happen and move that in the x direction. I have lots of plugins installed, so it's going to give me different components. But let's just move this a little bit in the x direction. So I'm going to move this a little bit in the x direction and let's turn on those lines this line so we can understand what's happening okay the most important thing is that if we have this point here this point uh, has to be on this line so we have to rotate that uh, the complete module these uh, dimension i mean this degree so if you want to make that happen, you have to find that degree and then rotate it. So that's easy. What I want to do is to go to line, make this line. Basically, I'm going to go to the curve and find the point on curve, connect this to the start. So this is going to be the start. Then we will have uh, the intersection, which will be a circle again. So let's just put this copy this I'm going to go to the half of this it's at the center so it's half of the curve uh, again draw a circle the radius should be the size of this line so let's just give that line we have doesn't really matter because they are same in dimensions 
so if you want you can also give that second line uh, that's the radius and uh, I think that I gave the wrong center because we have to put that at the start right because we have to make that radius and find the intersection so I just changed that to the start and we had that so let's just delete that okay let's go to the intersection again intersection curve curve the circle with this line pick up with list item this is the first one fine we can give that to the line we tried all of these steps because we wanted to find the degree and I made the line because you can use two lines to find the degrees between them I'm going to go to the vector a vector and angle right I'm going to make that angle happen the first vector is this line so what can we do we can explode that and find the first line so I'm going to go to the curve explode use that list item to pick up the first section this is our first vector our second vector is this line and it gives you the rotation degree that's all we have to do and now we can turn on the movement <coughs> rotate rotate 3d let's find that okay we have to rotate that from the start because we want to make that from the start don't we we want to rotate that so we give that as the center point the axis is z as default the degrees is basically a radiance so it doesn't matter because we find that in radiance that's all we have to do and you can see that it's exactly sitting on the lines and we are good to okay, now what we want to do is to find the mirror so i'm going to type mirror and find the mirror of this uh, what do we want to do is to find let me have uh, uh, first of all show you how it's going to move i'm going to turn everything off turn on this one and let's move it you can see how it's moving in space right so now what we want to do is to find the mirror of this it's simply that line with this plane this is the z direction uh, so it's going to make that happen right this is the plane we have to make so again there's a lesson here we go to the vector and construct a plane the center of the plane is the center of the clock the x direction is this line and the second direction of the plane is z that means this is the plane and we can give that to the mirror so we have this two sections and we're good to go so if I just make a array of these lines, polar array, with this one and this one, the center is the center of the clock. So let's just give that to the center. And the count is 12. You can see that we have successfully modeled the clock. And it's really beautiful because it's exactly what the model is. And you can see they are the same dimension we had all the times it's just rotating and the lines are always one thing and that's the polyline we made okay uh, now it's the time to uh, make them uh, happen you can also just make a polar array for the first part and another polar array for the mirror so we have them into separate groups and uh, let's go to the fabrication part we have to make that as a fabrication let's just turn everything off and here we go so i'm going to put a plugin for you you can install it's peacock and let me just find that handling tools peacock it's a great tool for jewelry and parametric design so i want to use one of the tools in the workbench which after you install it i will put it in the link so you can download it from our website and it's called offset curve so let's just find that offset variable it's really cool 
it's it's going to give you an option to close that curve easily uh, you can also search for offset after installing that you will have it here and we can make it so let's just go for the offset variable give this curve a value and the most important part is that because these are 12 curves it's going to uh, think that they are all going to offset so remember you have to right click and graft so if you don't know about graft and flatten again just watch the video we have talked about and you can see what's happening okay that's the way you can make it and that will also happen for the next part we're going to graft that and have it so let's just turn that off and talk about the first sec first section and how we can make it we have to make uh, three holes in it if you just zoom in this part it's something like this okay I'm going to draw it like that so we have three circles one here at the center because it's going to connect and sit down on the next part and at the end uh, it's really easy what we want to do is to go to this uh, line and go to the curve use this point on curve first part at the half which is the mid and at the end go to the curve and draw a circle so we're going to connect with the shift key and give it a radius so maybe it's 1.8 based on your project you can change that remember you can't make that bigger so we have that and then what we want to do is to make a surface from it if you want you can also fabricate this to give it to a CNC machine but for now let's just see how it looks uh, surface and boundary so I'm going to use this one with the shift key at the circles and remember you have to put them all in one group so I'm going to simplify this one and simplify this one Again, if you don't know, watch the flatten and graph section. We have talked about simplify, and now we have them all. So let's just turn that off and extrude that to show the exact result in the Z direction. Maybe two, and we will have those parts. And it's ready for fabrication. You can see it's exactly. Uh, those parts and we want that also for the second part. So that's not really hard. What we want to do is to copy this Or maybe just simply delete this one That's a cool technique you can use copy all of that and This time use the polar array for the mirror. So it's going to automatically fix that you can see it's in the uh, the Z direction it's going to intersect that so I'm going to go to the direction and make that minus X that's it let's just give that a color display custom preview and another color for this one that's the way you can model the exact uh, sections of the clock the connected clock you can fabricate that that's really cool and now we can just say 20 it's, it's opening 60 okay you can see if you go too much it's going to give you nothing because it doesn't mean it, it it's not going to connect those lines maybe 50 Okay, the maximum is 40 because it's going to uh, take that off. So let's just put that to 30 and change that. You can see that when I'm changing, that's going to give you the results and you can make it. You can also play with those two different parameters we talked. Remove those lines. Remember these numbers, the first one has to be smaller than this one. So I'm going to make that happen. You can see it's making a bigger one and that's really easy we can increase the offset let's give that the same value to this one increase that we can increase the extrusion and finish this tutorial so that was the kinetic clock tutorial how you can exactly model this in grasshopper 
and you can see that we have them in Rhino. These are the parts, the first part, the second part. You can also uh, use those circles if you want to. Let me just show you. You can use those circles and connect a surface to that and extrude them to uh, if you want those pins, right? Let's just bake that into layer 3. You can see that you can have those pins, but perhaps we have to have it two times. So I'm going to say 2 multiplied by x, and it's going to give that up. So let's just put that down, or maybe just move it up and then move it down. It's not really important. I, would, I just wanted to show you that you can also model those pins in the z direction. Exactly move it up, then extrude that back in the z direction 3 I'm going to give it minus because it's going to go up minus x multiplied by 2 times because we have to put that completely to the end you can actually model everything in grasshopper and finish this that's it you can see it's really completely fit and if I just select the layer 3 you can see those pins and have that so that was the tutorial of how you can make that clock in grasshopper thanks for watching remember to like this video and fabricate one of these clocks and show it to us it's not really complicated to fabricate these things just you can uh, find the model the first one and make 12 times of that and or maybe 24 times because it's just the mirror of that and use pins to make the uh, kinetic clock come alive and you can see that this handle, as it rotates, it will close and open the clock. So it's not really hard to do that. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.